If you ever tried investing your money, it can get really confusing. Should you pay off your debt first? Max out your 401k? Where should you even invest? Today, I'll share the best investing order for your money and what I personally invest in. Starting with step one, your cushion fund. A 2022 study found that as much as 56% of Americans can't afford an unexpected $1,000 expense. Think of your cushion fund as a cash reserve that's specifically set aside for financial emergencies. I remember eight years ago when I got into a car accident, my, my car's entire bumper was messed up. The mechanic said it was gonna cost about $5,000 to fix. And obviously I was super stressed out because I had no idea where I was gonna get that kind of money. I was even considering taking on a loan even though I knew that the interest for it would easily cost a ton of money. But then I remembered, I had a cushion fund saved up for emergencies just like this. The good news is determining how much you need in your cushion fund is simple. Open up a spreadsheet and take account of all your monthly expenses. Rent, pineapple pizza, bills, multiply this total by five. If your monthly expenses are $2,000, you wanna save up for five months of expenses. So your cushion fund would be $10,000. Commit to saving this amount for unexpected emergencies, like when you get injured, your car breaks down, or you lose your job. But where should you store this money? Choosing the right place can make a significant difference. While traditional saving accounts like Chase and Bank of America have been the typical choice, there are significantly better places called High Yield Savings Accounts, or HYSAs. The reason? It's because they're gonna give you a lot more money for your money. With traditional savings accounts like Chase, the national average yield is 0.57% APY, meaning if you put $10,000 in this account, at the end of the year, you'd only have $10,000 in $57. On the other hand, high yield savings accounts can offer 4% APY, meaning at the end of the year, you'd have $10,400. Some great savings accounts you can check out are Ally, Marcus, and American Express. I also use this saving school tracker to save money a lot faster. Basically, I'll just put in how much I want to save, and then I can track my progress and visually see where I'm at. For a limited time, I'm giving away my ultimate savings goal tracker for free. Get it with the link below. Step two, and here's how you can get more money from your employer without asking for a raise or promotion. The trick is to take advantage of something very specific in a 401k plan. In 2023, four out of 10 Americans with a 401k plan didn't contribute anything to it. The problem is you're kind of just saying no to free money. Basically, a 401k plan is a retirement savings plan offered by many employers that offer two significant tax advantages that will supercharge your investments. First, all your contributions to the account are made with pre-tax income, meaning you'll pay less in taxes. In 2024, the most you can contribute to your 401k plan is $24,000, meaning if you earn $65,000 a year and you max out your contributions, in the eyes of Uncle Sam, your taxable income is only $41,000, easily saving you thousands and taxes. Next, whatever you do in the account is tax deferred, meaning if you receive any dividends or you sell any stocks at a profit, you don't have to pay taxes on it until you withdraw the money, allowing you to grow your money more quickly than if you had to pay taxes earlier. But that's not even the best part. In fact, you don't even wanna max out your contributions to your 401k just yet. Instead, for now, we only care about this thing called the employer match. Basically, it's when your employer gives you free money when you contribute to your 401k. How much your employer gives you depends on two things, the company's matching formula and how much you contribute. You wanna maximize your contributions up to the employer's match to take advantage of the free money. The most common matching formula employers offer is a 100% match for the first 3% you contribute with a 50% match for the next 2%. It sounds confusing, but basically, if your salary is $65,000 and you maximize your contributions up to your employer's match, you would contribute 5% or $3,250 in a year. In return, your employer would immediately give you another $2,600 for free, no questions asked, totaling $5,850 in your 401k. And don't worry about what to invest in. I'll share my personal favorite investment strategies later. Once you maximize your 401k's employer's match, or if your company doesn't offer an employer's match, immediately move on to the next step. When it comes to debt, one of the worst things is it strangles your monthly income. When you're paying hundreds of dollars or more for your credit cards, car loans, and student loan, it quickly eats up how much money you have left over. But the truth is, you don't wanna pay off every debt you have immediately, and I'll explain why later. But the good news is, determining which debt to pay off first 
is easy. Open a spreadsheet and write down every debt you have. Credit cards, car loans, mortgages, student loans, every creditor, every interest rate, every balance. Filter this list from highest to lowest by interest rate. Then highlight all the debt with a 7% interest or higher. That's our priority. The problem with high interest debt is that it always comes with high opportunity cost. Basically, how much you'll lose out on when you choose one option over another. Let's say you have $10,000 cash on hand and you wanna do something with it. You have two options. Option one, you can completely pay off your $10,000 credit card debt, which has a 20% interest rate. Or option two, invest the $10,000 in the stock market, which historically has a 7% average annual return. If you choose option two, then in one year, your credit card debt will grow to $12,000 since you didn't pay it off. But on the other hand, your investment portfolio would total $10,700, assuming the average return of 7%. The problem is with option two, you're effectively earning $700 dollars from the stock market, but losing $2,000 to credit card interest, putting you $1,300 behind compared to if you chose option one. This doesn't mean investing is bad. It's just about priorities and opportunity cost. Once your high interest debt is out of the way, immediately move on to the next step. Step four is using the most powerful tax saving and investment account available. It offers a super rare triple tax break that if you use it correctly, can accelerate your wealth tax free. The problem is most people have no idea this account can be used as an investment tool because of its name, if they even know it exists at all. Here's how the triple tax break works in this account. First, your contributions to this account are made with pre-tax money. This helps you by decreasing your tax bill, which in turn leaves you more money for you to spend or invest elsewhere. Second, anything that goes on inside this account is also tax-free, like if you receive any dividends or sell any stocks at a profit. Third, when you withdraw cash from this account for specific qualified expenses, it's also tax-free. These three pillars allow your money to grow significantly faster than it would if taxes were paid each year, which is why I have maxed out my contributions for this account every single year. This account is the HSA or health savings account. In 2024, you can contribute $4,150 to it for individuals and $8,300 for a family. Although the name doesn't sound like it can be used for anything else other than health related expenses, I need you to think of it as an investing and saving vehicle with tax benefits that you can use to pay for qualified medical expenses tax free, like medicine, doctor visits, and surgeries. But the real power happens over time. If you contribute to an HSA and invest year over year, you will create an ocean of tax-free funds to use when you need it most, when you're older. Because by then, chances are healthcare will be your biggest expense. Research shows that a single person in their 60s today can plan to spend $157,500 on healthcare alone between now and when they die. But there is one issue with this account. You can only get an HSA if you have a high deductible health plan, which could be a double-edged sword. On one hand, a high deductible plan means you pay lower monthly premiums. If you don't go to the doctor often and rarely have medical expenses, that's fantastic. You pay less for insurance. But on the other hand, if you have serious health conditions or you just love sitting in a doctor's office, this might not be for you since a high deductible plan means you need to pay much more out of pocket for your visits before your insurance kicks in. Step five is the second greatest wealth creation vehicle of all time. The problem is most Americans don't understand it so they don't take advantage of it. But the best thing about it is anyone can have one, with one exception. It's called a Roth IRA. Basically, it's a retirement account with two powerful tax advantages that will accelerate your wealth. First, similar to the HSA, anything that goes on inside this account is also tax-free, like if you receive any dividends or sell any stocks at a profit. Second, when you withdraw cash from this account, it's also tax-free. The great thing is you can contribute up to $7,000 if you're under the age of 50 or $8,000 if you're over 50 in 2024. But the catch is you can only contribute to a Roth IRA with post-tax dollars, meaning you already paid taxes on the income the year that you received it. On the bright side, you'll never have to pay taxes on it again. Anyone can open a Roth IRA, whether you're employed, unemployed, or self-employed. It doesn't matter. And anyone can contribute to it, except if you make too much money. In 2024, you can't contribute to one if you're single and your annual income is more than $161,000, which in 
or if you're married and your combined income is more than $240,000. If your income is too high, check out the backdoor Roth IRA strategy. After you max out your Roth IRA, we want to revisit something we kind of left hanging. We've taken full advantage of our 401k's employer's match, but there's still more we can do. Step 5.5 is to max out the rest of your 401k plan this year. Although you won't get additional employer match on these extra contributions, you'll still benefit from the tax savings. Once you're done, immediately move on to step 6.5. After taking advantage of your tax advantage accounts, the next best place to invest your excess money is in a regular brokerage account. There are countless brokerages out there like Robinhood or Schwab, but my personal favorite is Moomoo. I've been using Moomoo for years, and the great thing is not only do they offer 5.1% APY on your cash, but for a limited time, they're giving you five free stocks if you open an account and deposit $100. Despite the funny name, they are a registered broker dealer with the SEC and is a member of SIPC, meaning you're insured up to $500,000. Sign up with the link below and it's a great way to support the channel for free. Although brokerage accounts don't have any tax advantages like retirement accounts, they do have two major benefits. First, if you're buying a house in five years, you're saving for a car, or you just need a place to grow your money, the great thing is you can easily access your money. With retirement accounts, it's a lot harder unless you reach a certain age and you might face penalties. Second, you can still maximize tax efficiencies with a brokerage account when you sell the stock at a profit. You can choose to pay the lower long-term capital gains tax if you hold the stock for more than a year instead of paying the higher short-term capital gains tax if you hold it for less than a year. And before I share with you the best and easiest thing to invest in for all of these accounts, we have step 7.5. Reopen your debt spreadsheet from step three. Now we wanna focus on the remaining low interest debt, generally anything less than 6%. We're dealing with this last because low interest debt doesn't sacrifice too much in potential returns relative to how much we could make in the stock market. But that doesn't mean you should never pay them off. The best way to tackle this is to split your remaining low interest debt into two categories. First, high priority. I like to prioritize paying off debt with interest rates around four to 5% over investing that money in a taxable brokerage account for two reasons. One, the uncertainty of stock market returns in the short term versus the guaranteed returns of paying down the debt. And two, the financial flexibility and mental benefits of being debt free. Second category, lower priority. For the remaining debt with less than 3% interest rate, I like to continue regular payments to it to keep it manageable while directing any extra money towards the stock market, which will have high returns over a time. But the question remains, what is the best and easiest thing to invest in? When it comes to investing, most people think of flashing screens, day trading, and aggressive scrimming. But apart from what you've seen on Wolf of Wall Street, investing doesn't need to be hard or overwhelming. The basics are easy, and once you're familiar with them, you can make millions in your lifetime. With nearly all my investment accounts, I primarily do a passive fund strategy. This is the easiest way to get into the stock market and you can just set it and forget it. I invest in passively managed index funds like FXIAX or VOO, which tracks the performance of the S&P 500, so basically the 500 largest companies in the US. Easy peasy. But I invest in them with a specific strategy called dollar cost averaging. It sounds a lot more technical than it actually is, but basically it's an investment strategy where you buy X dollars worth of stocks during a fixed interval period. Let's say you invest $200 into Apple every single month for five years. If you're investing a fixed amount of money, each time you buy, you'll get more shares when the stock price is lower and fewer shares when the stock price is higher. Over time, this will minimize the cost per share you pay for your stock. So if you have $300 to invest and you're looking at a very volatile stock called the Mr. Magic Lamp Company, in the first month it's $10 per share, in the second month it's $5, in the third month it's $20. Say you wanna invest $100 a month for three months. At the end of three months, you bought 10 shares in the first month, 20 shares in the second month, and then five shares in the third month. So now you have 35 shares for $300 for an average price per share of $8.57. Your price per share isn't the cheapest at $5 per share, assuming you can tell the future and you bought everything in the second month, but it's also not the most expensive at $20 per share if you accidentally bought everything in the third month. I love dollar cost averaging because it helps me make sure I'm not dumping my money at a high price point. It's especially powerful during volatile times because it reduces the psychological fear 
fear that makes you too scared to invest. And that leads me to something you've got to start accepting. And it's that even if you're trying your hardest to build your wealth, sometimes you might still feel like you're not doing enough. And that might be because you don't know the six strategies to effortlessly save more money, according to science. Click here to discover the six strategies you need to start doing now.